because you just you have a leader of the party instead of an emperor you have these layers of influence and different provinces is very similar to the pattern that ancient china had for literally thousands of years and they have a way of thinking they have a cultural way of thinking just as we in america have an automatic assumption that certain things are supposed to be a certain way everybody wants to have a democracy don't they well guess what no everybody doesn't everybody would like to have more say in what happens in their lives but everybody also wants order and everyone wants things to go smoothly and in different cultures they have a historical background that leads them to believe that order and the welfare of society comes from different states of being democracy especially american democracy is not as democratic as people think we otherwise we would not have electoral college and the majority vote which is what everyone thinks is supposed to win would have counted in which case we wouldn't have had mr trump in the white house and this has happened before <clears throat> there aren't many really democratic countries in democracy but um china has always wanted to be a world player but it does its manipulating on the low down on the underside and it uses financial influence whenever possible over military influence but it has the military to back it up and <clears throat> that makes it being very smart also i'm sorry to say it but china's leaders don't just get to be leaders because their family is rich they get to be leaders because they study their own politics and their own history i don't think there is leadership in most major countries except the united states right now where the people who are running the country are as shockingly ignorant of actually what the process of government is in their own country. Uh I we've seen it in some other places, Iran, Iraq, sometimes Turkey, absolutely, where dictatorships rule uh because they don't care or because they have amassed the kind of physical power necessary to enforce what they're doing. This happens also in South America from time to time. But I've never seen it never seen us come this close in the United States. as i have with this recent election and uh that's why i think the people that are protesting are very important and the votes that are coming up in this by election year uh are going to be vital because without young people who will be turning 18 and i hope to jesus that they they register to vote and i hope people who were resting at home thinking it didn't matter will get out and vote because if I'm not saying the Democrats are terrific. Not at all. I believe the Democrats lost this election. I don't think that Trump won, but that's a different story. But if we don't get out and vote, if we don't take the Congress back at the very least, we will have no power because you cannot have the executive branch and the legislative branch and the judicial branch all in the same party line. That is against what the Constitution designed the system to do. And so we've got to take back at least our Congress, our House and Senate. in the hopes of returning ourselves to balance for the next 2 years so we can maybe vote for someone else and i only hope the democrats have someone to put out there who is worthy and who will really take up the banner and will try to win back for us the many freedoms and equities that have been taken away in this administration aside from hope are you worried are you worried like i am I am wor well here's the balance. I have been worried for a long time. The recent actions by young people against uh gun violence have inspired me. Sometimes in order to get people to wake up, things have to get very very bad. Because if they're only a little bad, it's not bad enough to make you worry. So sometimes you look at a situation and say, well, maybe we had to get really worried. and that is something that the Trump administration has done it's frightened a lot of people well when people get frightened they suddenly realize that they have to do something uh you and I are of a generation that protested the Vietnam war that maybe were involved in the civil rights movement we were quite young then maybe but yeah um we know what it means to go out on a street and march maybe to get gassed and put down maybe to face the danger of police we are of the generation that knew about the Kent state massacres and why they were called massacres um that that's a courage that's a commitment to an ideal and you have to get really scared if you're going to get to a place where you say my life is worthless if i do not stand up for the things i believe in 
And I do not believe that the white supremacists or the right-wing extremists who are taking over the Republican Party have that kind of faith. They're greedy, they're short-sighted, they have uh, their own view of history, and they are clinging to it passionately, even though it has no logic and no substance to support it. But if that's what it takes to get people out to actually vote, statistics show that when you have a large voter turnout, the Democrats always win. That's why the Republican Party is sacrificing every ethic and every moral and every value it has to continue to maintain this presidency. And they do it for a very simple reason, and that's because they know they cannot win legitimately. That's why, also, they're not going out after the Russians. Now, Trump may have a, a tape on him, but the U.S. Congress doesn't. The Republicans should be all over this. My parents were blacklisted during the 50s because they were supposed to be communists, even though all they were fighting for was things like civil rights and stuff. Well, and they never wanted to take down the United States. I don't know anyone, even those who were members of the Communist Party in America, who wanted to destroy the United States. They wanted to change. They wanted to make it better. That's what working people were about. But right now, what's happening is a move, a definite move to turn America into essentially a fascist state. I do believe that. I believe they don't even know what fascism is, but that's what they're doing. And I think the Republican Party is destroying itself with its own greed and self-possession. There is going, you can't push people past a certain point. And if you want a revolution in this country, if you want all those guns really turned on you in Washington, keep going in this direction. Because sooner or later, even the loving, liberal, left-wingers are going to discover that the only way they can survive, maybe, is to take it over. And the Constitution says, you know, in the, in the, if your government does not serve you, you have a right to change it. Wow. That's in there. So if I were Republicans in the gun lobby, I would watch out because all they're, all they're looking at now is that most people who come from this place of law and order in the terms of the government are not the kind of people who pick up a gun and shoot. I mean, you've had, you had one guy, right? One guy who went and shoot, shot that senator or whatever. One guy. And how many extremists have been out there with their guns? Right-wing extremists, excuse me. Too many of them have been allowed into the Republican Party. Too many of them have too much power. And too many good Republicans are now looking at the situation and saying, I'm quitting. Yeah. I would like to see them get together and form a third party. Yeah. And, and take down, either take back their Republican Party or turn it into yet a new party. A new party that's going to represent the values they do. I don't agree with them 90% of the time, even so. But they have a legitimate point of view. And they have never been traitors to the United States of America. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't know why we can't sue Donald Trump and several other of his advisors for having violated their oaths of office, because I know what those oaths say. And as far as I can see, they have not fulfilled them. Protect the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Well, it's a little hard if you're domestic enemy is in the White House. <laughs> there was a suit filed recently. I have to look it up more. Uh, against uh, Trump and some of his uh, entourage for what, what happened in Russia with Russia. The Democratic Party has taken uh, Donald Trump and the entire White House, basically, are taking them to court. They're suing them for having uh, committed criminal acts which directly uh, affected the ability of the Democratic Party to function. That's interesting because it's a civil suit. So that has a different set of criteria than the kind of legal situation, but it's using similar evidence. And this reminds me of O.J. Simpson's situation, where he was freed from uh, the legal question of whether or not he killed his wife, but he was found guilty in a civil suit, and what he was, you know, they fined him a bunch of money. I'm not sure what the results are of a civil suit in this case, but I think they knew they had to do something. My understanding, I read about it today, was that uh, there was a two-year statute of limitations on the Democratic Party's ability to take this to court, and so they had to act now. And they were assembling information, but a lot has been assembled already, and I think with the recent raids, that gave them the clue that we can start initiating this procedure. So, While we're on the subject, what would happen if Trump actually fired Mueller? 
Honestly, I don't know. I would think that enough of the even the most rad conservative Republicans, the most um, reactionary Republicans, would say you went over the line. But Trump cannot fire Mueller. I mean, they say this on TV all the time, but it doesn't matter because reporters keep saying the same words. Trump tells uh, Rosenstein that he wants Mueller fired. Then Rosenstein has to do it. So Trump, you watch for Trump to fire Rosenstein because he has to fire the gentleman from the Justice Department who is in charge of Mueller before anyone will fire Mueller.